It's great to see such a wide range of sectors represented here this morning, and I really hope that that's going to be reflected in the bids that we receive for ANSCII rounds three and four. So my role this morning really is to provide you with a brief overview of the um, aims of the initiative and also of the key criteria. And I'm hopeful that that will whet your appetite for the later um, presentations that you're going to hear and also hopefully help you to start thinking about your own um, project ideas. Okay then, so I suppose the first question that I should answer really is, well, what is the Advanced Manufacturing Supply Chain Initiative, or AMSCI as I'm going to refer to it as throughout the rest of my presentation? Well, essentially, it's a funding competition, and it's all about trying to improve the global um, competitiveness of UK supply chains. Um, and basically, uh, what that entails really is uh, trying to do everything uh, possible to bring back work to this country and keep the work here that we already have. And that's connected to the wider government policy about rebalancing our economy. So the initiative was first announced um, and launched by the Secretary of State for Business, Vince Cable, back in December 2011. And we held two rounds of the initiative last year, rounds one and two, for which 125 million was available. Now, those rounds were quite heavily oversubscribed. I think overall we had um, a funding ask come in that uh, exceeded the amount we had available by a ratio of about three to one. And so therefore, that was one of the reasons why the government decided that as part of its uh, autumn statement in uh, 2012 last year, that it wanted to make a further 120 million available to run two more rounds of the initiative. So that's where rounds three and four came from, and that's why we're all here today. Okay then, so I suppose before I get into talking about the real nitty gritty of rounds three and four, I just wanted to make some general observations. Perhaps the most important thing to say to you all is that rounds three and four are open to all organisations operating as part of a manufacturing supply chain. And I think that is very important to stress. Um, in, in terms of the scope of this competition, when we talk about manufacturing, what we mean actually is manufacturing in its broadest possible interpretation. So where something is being produced um, predominantly. And also, I suppose what I wanted to say as well is, don't be put off by the term advanced manufacturing. I realise that that term comes with some baggage, perhaps, um, it might be said. And traditionally, in some circles, when we talk about advanced manufacturing, we were quite specific about the sectors we meant. So we might be referring only to automotive or aerospace. However, for this competition, when we talk about advanced manufacturing, what we mean is the way in which the manufacturing has taken place. So basically, are you involving high-tech um, techniques? And that could be in any sector. So for example, in textiles, that might be that you're going to be using the latest high-tech digital printing to print onto the fabric, perhaps. And that's very important to stress up front. Uh, secondly, I also wanted to emphasize to you all that we're, for this initiative, taking a very flexible approach to the funding. So both grants and loans are available. Indeed, if you wish, you can apply for a combination of the two. It's very much up to you to consider the needs of your project and also to consider the state aid requirements as well. That may dictate what you're able to ask for. So we're able to fund um, three types of activity through the initiative. You can apply for one or you can indeed apply for all three. And those three are the purchase of capital equipment, research and development, and then specific skills and training. Now, I wanted to particularly emphasize on the skills point that the Department for Business has quite a few other skills funding pots already. I'm sure some of you will be familiar with initiatives such as the um, employer ownership pilot, for example. And so it's very important if you're applying for skills funding from this scheme that you make clear that it is specifically for the supply chain and why the existing other skills funding pots cannot meet your needs. Because clearly, you know, with a limited budget, we don't want to duplicate any activity that might be going on elsewhere. And I suppose the final point I wanted to make um, in my sort of overview, if you like, is that AMSCI is intended to fund um, activities which are taking place in England. Now, obviously, because we are asking people to come forward in consortiums, 
It might be that you'd like to involve some companies based in Scotland or Wales or Northern Ireland within your consortium. That's fine, but you need to be aware that um, if your bid is successful, the elements of activity that they will be conducting um, will need to ultimately be funded by the um, devolved administration um, who is responsible for them. And so that means that you need to manage the risk that if you are successful with such companies, um, you would then need to um, speak to the devolved administration afterwards. And so there, there might be a slight risk there, and I want to just make that clear up front. Okay, so let's um, move on to think about the criteria in a bit more detail then. Um, so as in um, rounds one and two, we are once again looking for innovative projects which are really going to have a, an impact at a sectorial level. And dare I say it, the holy grail really is if we can have projects that um, will have an impact across several sectors to really drive up the quality of our supply chains. And so for that reason, we've retained a lot of the criteria um, from the original initiative. Um, so for example, any bids submitted to the scheme must be collaborative. They must involve a minimum of two organisations, uh, but there is no limit, no maximum limit on the number of companies or organisations that you can involve in your bid. Uh, in rounds one and two, we found that the average consortium size tended to be between five and ten organisations, but we also had successful bids where the consortiums were far larger. There might have been, say, 30 organisations, and I believe we had one consortium where it was almost an entire sector and there were about 50 represented. The only thing, I suppose, in terms of maximum size is you do need to be aware that you've got to be able to manage your consortium, so that may inform how large or otherwise you decide to make it. I see Will smiling at the back. Um, so the second point um, about the criteria is that once again, we're going to be looking for projects to be asking for a minimum of two million in support. This again is to ensure that we're really attracting projects that are going to have that sectoral impact that we wanted. Now I suppose the caveat to that, which some of you may be aware of, is that where you're able to involve a large number of SMEs, and where you can show that, yes, you are having that genuine sectorial impact, we would potentially consider projects that we're asking slightly less than two million. So that's just to, to let you know that. Uh, thirdly, we also expect that all, um, all bids should show that they've got a commitment from the company who is at the head of their supply chain. So we often refer to that company, depending on your sector, as being a prime or a tier one, but I realise that that terminology may not be used for all of you, so head of the supply chain. Um, strong, strong evidence of such a commitment um, may well be a financial contribution to the cost of the project, perhaps, or it might be a, um, a contract uh, for future work. Now, that's not essential, but it would show strong evidence there. And finally, um, we're also requiring that all bids should represent good value for money for the taxpayer. Now, I'm not going to talk about that point any further in my opening presentation, because my colleague Tim Hogan um, from the department will be giving you an in-depth look at how to uh, achieve good value for money later. So that was the uh, criteria which are the same in rounds three and four, but we've also um, added some additional criteria and there's certain elements of that that I'd now like to highlight to you, if that's okay. The first additional requirement is that we're asking that all bidders show how their project is going to result in carbon efficiencies. Uh, this is to help contribute to the UK's 2050 um, carbon reduction target. Now, I don't want anyone to panic about this criteria, because there are actually many different ways that you could meet it. So I suppose, for example, you might be looking at um, running a specifically low-carbon project. You might be developing a, a new green vehicle, for example. But it doesn't have to be that, is the point that I really wanted to make. It would be equally as valid um, in your project to be talking about moving the manufacture of a component from overseas back to the UK, perhaps, and then you'd be able to show that by doing that, you are generating significant carbon savings because you're not having to do the amount of transport that you were doing before. And also, presumably, you'd be generating significant cost savings, perhaps, for your business as well. The second additional criterion 
is that we're asking that this time round, uh, because of limited uh, funding resources, that all bidders demonstrate how what they are proposing um, aligns with wider government policy and also the wider um, strategy within the sector from which they come. So when you um, have a look at the uh, guidance for applicants, you will see in there that we've included a link um, to where you can go and you can find out the latest about the industrial strategy that the department is delivering and you can find out what's relevant to your sector. You could also get an insight into that um, through your one-to-ones this afternoon. That's a very good question to ask your sector specialist and I certainly would encourage you to do that. And I suppose also on this point, I would emphasise to you, please think as broadly as you possibly can. Um, so it might be perhaps that you're from a composites um, company and you might think, well, there's the composite strategy. But actually, in terms of answering this point, there are probably likely to be several strategies that might be relevant to you. So you may well, as a composites company, be supplying both the aerospace and the automotive industries. So I would encourage you to draw on as much of that as possible in your bid. Finally, uh, the third change that we've made is that we've listened to feedback uh, from previous rounds and we wanted to clarify the arrangements around so-called programme bids. Now in terms of AMSCI, when we're thinking about programme bids, what we mean is bids where um, not all of the end beneficiaries of the funding are identified up front because it's not necessarily possible to do that um, at the time. Now, we're, we're quite happy to allow these bids because we would like to ensure that there is a genuine impact at a sectorial level and these bids could be a potential vehicle for doing that. However, we need to make sure that those bids do not result in a lot of dead weight and money sticking to the sides. We want to make sure that as much of the money gets out to companies as possible so that we can deliver the benefits. And therefore, for that reason, you will see in both the guidance for applicants and the competition brief that if you're going to be applying with a program bid, we ask you in particular that you commit to the fact that you're not going to be running a further competition yourself. Okay, you'll need a robust way to choose who you are going to benefit, but what we don't want is lots of mini amps popping up um, all across England. Uh, secondly, we also ask that you try and keep your admin overheads for the programme as low as possible. And ultimately as well, um, for the programme bids, we see them as the way of assisting um, second tier or subsequent tiers of SMEs who might not have been able to get together in a consortium necessarily to um, launch a project bid of their own. Therefore, if you were running a program bid, we would expect that they would be the bulk of the beneficiaries. Okay, so the next slide is perhaps slightly redundant now, because I think Mark Barrow did an excellent job in explaining Birmingham's role in assisting us with the initiative. But it was basically just to make the point that we, ha we are three um, separate organisations working to together to deliver this initiative. So as you know, um, Biz obviously we were the policy owner and the policy lead. Um, the Technology Strategy Board, um, we're using their expertise of running competitions. So you will um, apply using their website, for example. And finally, Birmingham City Council are doing a sterling job helping us with the investment decisions. And they will also be responsible for um, the due diligence process and for assisting you with your claims and monitoring once you've been a successful applicant and your project's about to start. So I just wanted to end, really, by sort of highlighting to you all, as if you really needed to know, um, that the competition has opened today, and the closing dates are noon on the 29th of May for round three, and noon on the 16th of October for round four. Uh, I won't go into the application process because, as you know, Sarah Bodden from the Technology Strategy Board will be describing that to you in detail later on. Um, so, yes, I just really wanted to say um, thank you very much for listening. And I look forward to um, speaking to as many of you later on as possible and very happy to take questions on both the policy and also the criteria for the initiative in the Q&A. Thank you very much.